good day. In this lesson, you will learn to define quadrilateral. Identify kinds of quadrilateral. Identify quadrilaterals that are parallelogram. Determine the condition that guarantee a quadrilateral a parallelogram. Let us define first what is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. It has four vertices and the sum of its interior angles is 360 degrees. Let us consider the figure on the right. The given figure is a quadrilateral whose vertices are L, O, V, and E. The name of a quadrilateral is usually using the four vertices consecutively. So the name of this quadrilateral is quadrilateral love or it could be O V E L or it could be V E L O or it could be E L O V. So as long as the, the vertices are written consecutively, that could be the name of the given quadrilateral. So since quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon, we have also four angles. And these four angles are called interior angles. If you observe in our figure, uh, the curve that is color blue, that symbolizes an angle. So we have four angles there. So the first angle that is written is angle L. Okay, or angle ELO or angle OLE. Now, what is the the importance of naming an angle one letter and three letters? So in naming an angle in one letter, it is safe to, to name an angle in using one letter if the vertex shared only one angle. So, in our figure, all of the vertex there, L, O, V, E, shared only one angle. So, it is safe to name an angle in one letter. But what is the importance of naming an angle using three letters? It is important naming an angle in three letters, especially when a vertex shared or two or more angles okay like for example in this figure l o v e so as you observe vertex e and the vertex l and vertex v shared two angles this one and this one also in the other side of the angle here v this angle and also this angle so if we are referring for this angle okay this angle the name of this angle is not angle l because angle l is the whole thing that is angle l but if we are referring for this angle this is not an angle l it is angle o l v so, ang paggamit sa Osaka letter ani in naming this angle is not correct. The correct is naming the angle is using three letters. So, the name of this angle is angle OLV or angle VLO. As well as this one. This is not an angle L. Okay, this angle is not an angle L, but it is an angle V, L, E, or angle E, L, V. Okay? That is how we are going to name an angle using three letters. But, if there is only one angle shared in one vertex, like for example, angle O, so we say that angle is angle O. No. Or angle L, O, V. Pisanasa na ng duha. Okay? Safe sa pag-names ni Angle. O, pero, 
But if there are two angles, again, two angles, like for example here, angle V, this is not an angle V. This is angle LVO. This is not angle V, but it's angle LVO. As well as this one, angle EVL or LVE. So, ang vertex niya dapat nasa center. In naming, in naming three letters, for example, this one, LVE, angle LVE, the vertex is the center of the three letters. Okay? So, this is one, OLV. This one, angle OLV. Or you can write this angle VLO. Okay. That is the importance in, name, in naming an angle using one letter and using three letters. So, angle O, or it could be named as angle LOV, or angle VOL. And angle V could be named as ang angle OVE, or angle EVO. And for angle E, it could be named as angle LEV, or angle VEL. Okay? So, also, the name of the four sides of a quadrilateral using also the segment. Okay. So, here, segment LO. So, ang naisuwat nga out, okay, the line na nasa igbaw sa duha ka letters that corresponds nga segment na siya basta walay arrow. Okay. Segment, let us review, segment is a subset of a line. There are two subsets of a line. Array and a segment. So, walay arrow, duha ka ang laang, ang linya, straight line, walay arrow, that's, that's segment. So, segment LO, segment OV, segment VE, and segment LE. Okay, these are the four sides of the quadrilateral love or LOVE. Now, the sum of interior angles is 360 degrees. So, since sum siya, so, the operation there is addition. Okay? So, M stands for measure. So, measure of angle L plus the measure of angle O plus the measure of angle V plus the measure of angle E is equal to 360 degrees. Okay? Do not forget on that formula because along the way, we are going to use that one in solving problems involving quadrilaterals. Okay. Now, these are the, the kinds of quadrilateral. The first one we have parallelogram. A quadrilateral which two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Next is rectangle. Rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles. And these four congruent angles are called right angles. When we see right angles, the measure is 90 degrees. Next is square. It is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four congruent angles. And these four congruent angles is also called right angles. Now, number four, we have rhombus. Rhombus, it is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Next is trapezoid. It is a quadrilateral which only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Next is isosceles trapezoid. It is a trapezoid in which the non-parallel sides are congruent. Next is kite. Kite is a quadrilateral in which two pairs of adjacent sides are congruent. Okay, now based on our definition, we can create a flow chart in which the top is the quadrilateral and the down below are the kinds of quadrilateral. So, quadrilateral, trapezoid, parallelogram, and kite. And under trapezoid, that's isosceles trapezoid, under parallelogram are rectangle, rhombus, square. Okay? So there is a relationship between, based on the flow chart, there is a relationship between square and rhombus. Because square, uh, 
four congruent sides also rhombus is four congruent sides so do na sila relation Now, in this video, let us talk about parallelogram. Identify whether the following quadrilaterals are parallelogram or not. Put a check mark under the appropriate column. Number one, trapezoid. Parallelogram or not parallelogram? Second is rectangle. Third is rhombus. And the fourth one is square. Answer. Trapezoid is not a parallelogram. Number two, it's rectangle, rhombus, and square are not are parallelogram. Okay, let us go back with the definition of a parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral whose two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So let us illustrate. Now, given that this quadrilateral is not a, let us assume that this is not a parallelogram. So, parallelogram quadrilateral A B D C. Now, if segment A B and segment C D are parallel, and also segment A C and segment B D are also parallel. Then, quadrilateral ABDC is a parallelogram. Okay? So, muna siya. So, the reason why a trapezoid is not a parallelogram because it has only one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Rectangle, square, and rhombus have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. Therefore, Rectangle, square, and rhombus are parallelogram. When we say parallel, <laughs> these are two or more lines that if we that if we continue that these two or more lines, they will never intersect each other. Di siya magbagat kung sa ato pa. Buran na siya og ah. Uh, it is like kubaga. Two people with the same feelings. Uh, sure. But the same sila. No? But they will never see each other. Huh? That is parallel love. Parallel lang love. They, have the, they are the same. They have the same feelings. But wala sila nakita. No? Di sila pinatagpo. No? Di sila pinatagpo. That, that is parallel love. So if we have parallel lines, what sila gipagtagpo? They will never intersect each other. That is parallel. So let us go back with our definition here about parallelogram. So kung si A, B, C, D are parallel, na si B, D, o si C, A, C are also parallel. If we continue the the segment A, B, also the segment C, D, make it a line na siya, no? mahimu na siyang line. So, si, si A, B, C, D, kung yung mga continuous, they will never intersect each other. That is parallel. Also, with B, D, and A, C. Okay. Let us talk about properties of parallelogram. This is more on reading, right? Uh, memorizing, remembering. So, the first properties of a parallelogram is any two opposite sides are congruent. Then, the second one is up in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. For the third one, in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. For number four, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. For number five, a diagonal of a parallelogram forms two congruent triangles. So, take note on these properties because these properties will be used in solving problems involving properties of parallelogram. So let us now talk about conditions that guarantee that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The first one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. The second one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram 
if both pairs of opposite side opposite angles are congruent. For number three, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. For the fourth one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if the diagonals bisect each other. The fifth one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if each diagonal divides a parallelogram into two congruent triangles. For the sixth one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if one pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay? Now, I have an assignment for you. And for those first person who will comment down below which is correct answer I will give 50 pesos a load so game so directions choose the letter that corresponds to the correct answer follow the directions okay these are the first two questions one which of the following quadrilateral has four congruent angles and four congruent sides a parallelogram b rectangle c rhombus d square for the second question which of the following is not a parallelogram a trapezoid b rhombus c square d rectangle for the third one how would you describe the opposite angles in a parallelogram a. They are congruent. B. They are both right angles. C. They are complementary. D. They are supplementary. For the fourth question, what can you say about the opposite sides in a parallelogram? A. They are congruent. B. They are perpendicular. C. They are not parallel. D. They are not equal. For the fifth one and the last one, in a parallelogram, how would you describe the diagonals? A. They are congruent. B. They bisect each other. C. They are parallel. And D. They are perpendicular. So, go. First come, the first person that who will comment the correct answer, I will give 50 pesos load. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something in my discussion today, especially for our students in town. Good day and thank you.